I'm Matthew Hogg. Um, I'm 52 years old and I live in Hull and uh, work in uh, multimedia and the arts and technology. Um, and I first accessed the Warren uh, way back when I was about uh, 17 and on the dole. And then throughout uh, the next 10 years really, on and off accessed the Warren until it got a recording studio and then really got involved for a period of time. Right. So I think that the Warren, when we were developing as young people, um, gave us all that support, not every single day. We didn't access the service in, in all the other things that it had as possible things, you know, using the eatery, but the studio was the main thing we were interested in and the sort of gear that was there. Um, you know, had that been expanded any further, you know, God knows what would have happened, what we would have been able to do. You know, I understand that now there's a recording label here, you know, if only, you know, if only in my day there'd been something like that and you weren't left to be looking around and trying to seek for that, but there'd been people to actually connect you up, connect you up with what a college to and perhaps other things outside of that and the industry as well and people in the industry and experienced things about that would have been an absolute gold mine. You know, not that it wasn't anyway, because we were, we knew what we needed it for. We came in, we used it, we got our materials, we set off and we were able to do what we were able to do. You, you couldn't get a gig if you didn't have a tape. You couldn't, you couldn't release a CD if you hadn't made a recording. You couldn't make something back and start growing yourself as a business. So you were, you were small businessmen. Last thing we would have wanted to be called, but that's what we were doing. We were setting up loads of people. We were doing something really useful. We were staying out of mostly out of trouble, and the, uh, you know, pursuing something that we all loved. And that's really hard to grasp that, but that was a definite keystone in something happened. The Warren was a keystone in terms of that and the Warren now has to be a keystone. It's developed beyond there and it has m a massive amount of potential in a much more um, competitive uh, uh, arena and a much more competitive society in terms of that. So people need some of that edge. It gives, it would give a city the edge in terms of that. It would give young people the edge. It would give all of that in terms of uh, people being able to uh, pursue something valid and valuable, especially in terms of the arts and culture, you know, which is left to the wayside so much. But, you know, there's already something here. There's already something you know, all that experience, all the, the building, the people, what the plans for the future. Um, with, without it, you just, you know, it's like taking away a person, isn't it? Take away a person. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes losing somebody. You know, that's a dreadful thing to happen, you know. And, you know, it has a personality. It's, a, it's a, an organisation that's had thousands of young people go through it and continues to have young people going through it and, and developing in that way and finding their feet. You know, the uses of that. You know, we know in society that when you start pulling away bits of support here and there and here and there, what happens is holes appear and people start falling through them. And, and there are really serious consequences to that. Really serious. We know, proven, factually proven, that when you start to pull things away, all sorts of problems occur for people. And you know, if we're just to mention things like health, mental health and health, you know, people's lifespan reducing because of issues around doing that. There's, you know, how can that, how can that be a good thing? How can that be a good thing in any way? And we know that for a fact, you know, the Marmot report, we don't need to, you know, we know it's already been signed up to. I'm Melanie, I'm 37 years old and I started coming to the Warren when I was about 14. The one a specific thing I got involved with, I just liked coming in because I felt safe and you could get something to eat and you won't roam in the streets and I don't know, you felt like somebody cared even though I'm 37 now, I still feel like they care even though I don't come in. And then I had a little boy and like with everything going like a bit pear-shaped, 
Um, my mum my used to look after Jill, but Alison in the Warren always made sure when there was any trips going on that I was able to bring Jill. She'd negotiate with my mum and then I could go on fishing with the Warren and um, with John, who used to be in the kitchen. We used to have a kitchen and God, the meals was amazing there. You could get them for £1.75. It was nice. What the Warren means to me personally, passionately, even though I don't come in anymore, I feel like everybody needs a bit of the Warren, everybody. When I weren't allowed to come in anymore, they'd give me a big bunch of flowers, big box of chocolates and a free meal. And I felt like my apron strings had been cut. I didn't like it. I didn't feel safe anymore. Even though I was safe, I was like 20, 25, 26. Um, you just have that comfort. You never got discriminated. Everybody was an equal. Everybody was the same. Everybody got treated the same. And that was really nice. Um, there was absolutely everything in the Warren that one person could need if you had nobody. If you had children, if you had a housing problem, if you was hungry. Um, so really, the Warren's done everything for me and I've got a life now. Um, I did take drugs and get on the wrong side of the law. Nobody ever judged me for that neither. I've got a nice little house, two jobs, two kids, 118, 16. My older boy plays for Hull FC, under 23s. I don't know what else I can say about the one other than it's amazing. We need it. Don't get rid of it, else it'll be a crying shame for all the kids. I don't know where they'd go, I don't know what they'd do. I personally, off the top of my head, couldn't say where they would go or who could help them, because even though people don't look vulnerable, they are vulnerable. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to look vulnerable on the out to feel scared inside. I got diagnosed with bipolar six years ago. Maybe everybody thought I was just a naughty kid and a twat, but I wasn't. There was actually an underlying problem under there, and since I've been medicated and got a different life, I couldn't have asked for better. So I first came to the Warren in 1991, so we're talking about 25 years ago. Now going to be 46 this year. Prior to that I, I, I left home at 16, joined the army and I was medically discharged for about three and a half years later, so just before I was 20 years old. I think it was a sense of a bit of, uh, of pride but I didn't want to move straight back to my parents' house and, and, and be seen as a, as a failure in, in, in that respect, so I tried to give things a go by myself. So I spent a bit of time in, in London thinking that there's going to be opportunities there but I think the skills that I'd actually got from the army didn't necessarily give me any streetwise skills so before I knew it um, what I little money I did have from leaving the army it just soon vanished and I became homeless and um, I remember having to sneak into restaurants get the meal and then just leg it kind of thing and that was you know there was them kinds of things that was, was getting me through. Um, so, I mean, it was only for a short period of time, two or three weeks, but it was a case of, okay, maybe I should start heading back to Hull and, and see if I can find a, a safer community here. And so I'd, I'd come across the William Booth house, um, so I, I, in, in total I spent um, a good six months in there before I get in a, a, a council house, no, council flat. And um, coming into the Warren was, was, was something just to escape the everything what was happening in William Booth House because at certain times of the day you was allowed in certain areas so we always knew and I, 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 I met a friend in there and so we'd usually come together we always knew that this place was a bit of a safe haven. We was also mixing with like-minded people so um, common problems which was sharing and you have um, like a your general counselling kind of people or, or, or your staff so there was always there as a point of reference if there's, if there's anything that we needed um, any help with and there was always willing and, and helping to, um, to oblige with that so that was quite cool and it was quite good to come in for a cup of tea which was like 10 minutes at the time, I'm not sure if it's gone up but <laughs> inflation um, so, so that was the, the, 
Yeah, that, that was always nice. And I think one of the, the most beneficial things here was the fact that um, it was quite easy to come in and, and, and scan through papers for, for things like jobs or, or, or look if there's any um, private housing. So not only was it things like your, your newspapers here, but yellow pages. And we also had um, use of the telephone as well, which, you know, it was, it, it, all these little things was, you know, was just, just really helpful. So that was um, something that I look forward to coming here because I knew it was, you know, I'd be gaining things from it, and um, and so the Warrens always had a, a, a place in my heart, really. To it's been one of them stepping stones that helped me during that particular time. I mean, you know, I, I mentioned about the restaurants in London, but 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 here I was involved in little bits of petty crime, um, and and if I didn't have other outlets, then potentially that could have led to other things. So um, yeah. I thank the woman for that. It really did help to boost my confidence knowing that, that this place was here and, and, and there was a bit of a, a lifeline and somebody willing to listen and, and in order to support. So roughly around the age of about 28, I was, I was um, back in Hull. I still was working in the, in, in the factories and, and um, I became qualified in health and safety. And, and, and so when I left working in the factories, I set up my own business, um, just doing health and safety training. So to date, um, now 2016, we have 70 employees. We have 20 um, different offices around the world. We actually set up in Dubai about 10 years ago, so we have a big training centre there. I have quite a few holidays, uh, sorry, business trips there. <laughs> you can leave that admit <laughs> in. Um, yeah, so um, things like South Africa, I go there quite often, and, and, and a lot of the other offices are in, in conjunction um, with, with local partners. However, our places like India, Dubai, and South Africa, they're all people that originally worked in Hull um, and started off more in, in, let's say, junior sales level, worked their way up, and, and now they actually manage, manage the offices, and, and, and most of them actually live out in, in the country. So. The one was very instrumental in, in, in building my confidence and, and, and sorting out certain problems, understanding myself better and, and, and the wilder world. So it was beautiful. How many hundreds of thousands, millions of, 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 of teenagers, people in their early 20s, who were just lost the way a little bit and, and have that place to turn to. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it, you know, it really is a, an important key part of, of, of Hull and it's, you know, it's one of the places, as I mentioned earlier, is, is, is close to my heart because it, it, it helped me out so much. So, you know, it would be good to see the Warren standing here for, for many years to come, definitely. Well, I first came to the Warren um, back in 91, 92. So I was 15 slash 16 years old. Um, parents had split up. Um, dad was someone else. Mum was across in Scunthorpe, you know. Um, felt, you know, not wanted, but um, a lot of arguments. I was living with my mum, a lot of arguments with his stepfather. Got kicked out of there. Um, came back to Wool. Um, lived on the, well, I lived at a friend's house, but you know, I, I was not in the right crowd of friends, should I say, but um, which their parents thought, you know, they don't want you to mix around with other certain lads. So I ended up living on the streets and um, in like newly built houses, you know, so for about six months, um, even lived in my friend's dog kennel for about three weeks. Used to get up before his mum and dad got up, like wash my face on the cold tap outside run the streets, you know, it was just endless, monotonous, horrible, you know, I had no one to turn to. Um, and that's when I found out about the Warren um, and I came here. So yeah, I was, I was virtually 16, it was back in 90, I'm sure it was 92. And it was nice, you know, it was an eye opener, but you know, a lot of people saying it's an eye opener when you come in here, but it was an eye opener on the streets, you know, to be amongst that criminal sort of like world and learn on the night, you know, no one to turn to, um, in which I came in here and I spent a lot of time coming in here. Over about a two, three week period, which I found out other people was in the same predicament as me, you know, young girls being assaulted by the parents and, you know, the fathers, and it was horrific really to see how other people were, which really was in the same boat as what I was, homeless, no one to turn to. Um, I got in, got in with a 
social worker, Tracy her name was, um, who was associated with the Warren because that was like the doorstep. Um, and they got me accommodation, you know, to stay in. And I used to have, I think it was twice a week, we used to have like one-to-ones and we'd mix with other people in the group, in the house. Um, it was Ashgrove I'd moved on to then. And it was it was an eye opener, but it was a it was a good thing because you felt um, you got a bit of family. You know, it was that that family sort of like um, togetherness. She was all in the same boat, so you, you rode the storm out together. You know, and it it gives you a sense of belief in itself of wantingness. You know that you are still a person. It doesn't matter whether you're a millionaire or you're the Lord Mayor. You, to me, and that's how I always look on things now, you, you're all the same people, you know, whatever job, whatever background, you're all the same. And that's what gives me the inspiration, really, to, to move on and to grab life, you know, by its horns and just go with it. And I realised that, yeah, my friends were the best of friends to have, which I thought there was at the time. And, and that showed me the right path to go. And I'd moved out to uh, Patrington and got out of the city. Um, which I met now with my beautiful wife, who I've been married to for, let me think, 15 years. I better get that one right, I know. Um, and she had uh, siblings of her own, which, and we came to have three children together as well. So there's six children, which um, they've done remarkably well. You know, I've learned that from my past experience, from the Warren and from social workers that you, if you want something bad enough you've got to go out there and get it and and I've worked always worked I've got a successful joinery business um, a restaurant up and now across the water the lads you know the two eldest ones they've got businesses their own um, both are open new bigger adventures like on Humber Street um, and they're employing people I employ people, so now I'm giving back to the community, you know, and and I don't think none of that could have worked if I hadn't have had that path, you know, shown to me. Otherwise, I'd have probably been like some of my old friends, six foot under in the ground, which they, you know, I know I've heard from other people they are, or some of them are in prison, you know, but luckily I was one well, of luckily ones who really came here and, and seeks that, you know, what I was looking for and, and came out great. You know, I can't, I can't fault, love my life, love my life to bits now, you know, it's it's great. The, the children, um, even there, thank me for how things have gone. I never think I, I have that much impression on, you know, on them, like, but they, they, they are real grateful and we was hard with them, you know, you've got to work, you've got to work, you're not just going to be sit on lazy, you know, like, and they've gone out and it's given them inspiration, so that's what I've had out of it, I've passed on. Everyone's doing great, you know, and it's it's turned out as a, a happy, a happy ending really, you know, and I look forward to the future. Um, hi, my name's Stella, I'm 28, I started using the Warren about 12 years ago and I'm currently working as a social worker. Um, so I first came to the Warren when my brother started using the building, um, so I knew of the building, I knew sort of, you know, the support that he could get there. Um, I started using it myself when I was about 16. Um, my mum had passed away um, and I wasn't up to good stuff, just sort of here, there and everywhere, partying, doing what, you know, I shouldn't have been doing really. Um, and then the more and more that we came into the Warren during the day, sort of groups of friends, you know, staff would sort of approach you, have conversations like, hi, yeah, what are your plans today? Did you know this is on? And it just seemed a good thing to get involved with, you know, it was not just something for us to do at the time, but it was a friendly atmosphere, you know, we weren't getting into trouble, we weren't bored, you know, it was a, a nice environment and a chilled environment, we could all hang out, you know, it was cool as well, do you know? Um, and I think just after a few years of, of coming in and taking part in the thing and, 
you know, things weren't really working out for me outside of the Warren. You know, I was living in a hostel, um, needed to get my own accommodation, needed to get another job. Um, and I think it was just a case of the staff supporting me to apply for jobs, you know, motivating you if you was coming in and like you'd maybe not got a job, they were there to sort of talk you through it, you know, what went wrong, what can you do next time. Um, and I think also being a part of the groups, the sort of, you know, the, the residentials especially as well, they were confidence building in, in your character. So it sort of give you that confidence to say, oh, do you know what, yeah, I can do that, you know, and I can work as part of a team. And and I think the Warren have really helped to sort of just ground you as a, ground me as a person. So, you know, sort of when everything's a bit up in the air and you, you're in a p potential position to go anywhere, potentially down a really bad road, they sort of, you know, give you that crossroads to say, look, these are your options and the choice is yours. You know, not saying this is what you should be doing. It's about what do you want to achieve? And I think that sort of encouragement is what's helped me just try and pick different paths rather than the paths that I was on, really. You know, they helped me with that relationship breakdown, going through the courts, everything like that. And again, all of this was sort of empowering me as a person. Um, and then eventually when it came to the point where I was too old to come into the war and it was like, right, okay, this is just me now. You know, what, what can I use? What can I do? Who's gonna support me now? Um, and I think it's just been ingrained through the years of coming in here that you shouldn't give up, you know, you should aim higher. You know, I knew there was a potential that I could achieve whatever I wanted to achieve as long as I put it in. And I sort of went from there really and spoke to you know, the university, just to see what my options were. I knew that there was staff in the Warren doing degrees alongside the jobs as well. So, you know, I knew that that was a, a possibility. Um, so it was just a case of speaking to the university, seeing what my options were. They told me about the social work degree um, and I just jumped for it. I just went for it and it, I'd literally give up my job in the call centre not knowing what I was going to do for childcare, money. It was one of them where it's just like, right, let's go for it, just do it. And I remember my boss at the call centre said, um, you're putting all your eggs in one basket. And if you do that, that's that's a bad thing. You shouldn't really take a risk like that. And then that was sort of like, well, I'll, I'll prove you wrong. Do you know what I mean? And I, I did, I just jumped for it and I went for it. And three years later, I graduated and I'm sort of working in the voluntary sector myself now. Um, but the Warren have just they've empowered me, inspired me to, to just keep achieving, you know, things aren't going to be perfect. Things are going to be tough, but there's a lot of people within this city that are struggling with certain aspects of, you know, money, employment, drug use, homelessness, and having a base like the Warren to come back to, it's like a, it's a magnet, this building, it's like a magnet to me. That's why when I graduated, I came back here, because as soon as I put my gown on, you know, most people are all getting pictures taken by their mum and dad and stuff like that, but if you haven't got that, this obviously felt like my mum and dad, do you know what I mean? So straight away I put my gown and I was like, I said to my friend, we've got to go to the Warren. And that's what made me come back. I, I wasn't planning on coming here, it was literally when I put my cap and gown on and everybody else is sort of spending time with their family, whereas it was just me and my friend. So I think it was a case of, I see this building and the staff within it as my family through that time, you know, because they were the ones that gave me that advice, the guidance, the encouragement and were just there when you needed to cry, shout, slam doors, you know, really vent, you know, and it wasn't a case of, right, that's it, we're ringing the police, like most places would. The Warren would be like, right, come on, let's get you a cup of tea, do you know what I mean? And let's sit down and talk you through it. And I think that sort of guidance is what makes this place special to a lot of people and people keep homing back. If the Warren wasn't here, I wouldn't have been able to ground myself and I think without that grounding I'd have carried on in the behaviours that I was doing because I was in pain so I wouldn't have been able to resolve that pain I'd have had nowhere to get rid of that pain and to learn how to manage that pain as I grew up so I think if the, well I know if the warrant wasn't here I'd have stayed with a crowd that I shouldn't have been with and I knew that I shouldn't have been with them but there wouldn't have been any other alternative I had the warren gave me an alternative and without that I'd have carried on using drugs. I wouldn't have had the, the kind words that I had, you know, and the, the motivation, and I wouldn't have had the belief, you know, that people showed in me here. And I think without that, I'd have, you know, my confidence would have just get, got lower and lower. I'd have just carried on fulfilling selfish needs rather than 
needs that I knew to, to better myself as a person. So yeah, if the Warren wasn't here, I'd definitely, I'd, I would be in a completely different place because it's, you know, like I say, it, it's not the Warren itself that changes your life, it's you. However, the Warren really roots the core principles of what you need to, to look at and remember when you're going through those hard times.